Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. We thank God for, praise God, another opportunity the Lord has given me to come and praise God, share the word of God with you on this early Sunday morning. Praise God. Uh, what is it? Uh, March 10th, I believe it is. And once again, I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama, once again declaring that Jesus Christ, he is the answer. Pray God he's the only answer to the problems that we're facing today. Praise God, I'm just so glad that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. I'm so happy and praise God, just plain old elated that the Lord has saved me and the Lord has brought me into the family of God. It's a great privilege and I thank God for it. Once again, praise God, we're looking at the book of the Philippians. Um, praise God, this is our part three in this series, the final uh, part in this message here. Praise God. Philippians 3, we're looking at verse 10 again. Verse 10, I do encourage you as always to look with me, get your Bibles, read with me. Praise God. Give the opportunity, give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to speak to your heart. Praise God. To speak to you directly through his word. And it is through God's word. Praise God that he speaks to us. There are, is no other instrument nor the means that God uses to touch the hearts of his people, uh, but the word of God. Amen. Uh, Philippians 3 and 10, once again it reads, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Let's read that again. Praise God. Paul's desire, Paul's desire here is that I may know him, he says, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship, he says, of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, bless you. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. I thank you for allowing me to rise once again. And Lord, putting in my heart a word to share with your people this morning. And Father, I just pray now the power of God. I pray the spirit of the Lord may move mightily upon the hearts of your people. Open understandings, Lord, that the word of God might depart, be deposited upon good ground. And Lord, bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And Lord, I'll be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, Paul says he want to know him again, uh, and he want to know the power of his resurrection. And uh, we kind of labored here on this part of Paul's letter here, his desire. He wanted to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. So we spent three uh, uh, messages dealing with the power of his resurrection because it's so important. And this is part three, the final part in this uh, particular study. But now we've been studying Paul's, again, his, his, un, his thirst. He had a, Paul had an unquenchable thirst. He, over and over, if you read his letters, over and over, he uh, would say that I want to know or that we should know. He had an unquenchable thirst to know more about the power of the Lord's resurrection and the many benefits, praise God, there are benefits that are bestowed upon the believer as a direct result of his resurrection. Uh, there's a treasure chest there is what, and, and he wants to, he, he wants to dig deeper into it and praise God, extract all the, uh, the goodies out of this, uh, study, out of the study of his resurrection. And praise God, I, I feel the same way. It's like you're looking for buried treasure here uh, when you delve into the re resurrection of Jesus Christ. But Paul, he had a, a great thirst to know more about the benefits that come forth out of the power of the Lord's resurrection. And I hope that we have the same thing, same by desire. But now on this past Sunday, we closed out our teaching on this particular verse by recognizing that, uh, that uh, out of Christ's resurrection comes acceptance. We de that was the last thing we dealt with. Uh, we have been accepted into the family of God. 
Ephesians 6, 1, we looked at it on uh, Sunday, uh, where the apostle said that we are accepted in the beloved. We have been accepted into the family of God. And again, I say that means a lot to me, uh, being one that had some negative feelings uh, throughout my life about my acceptance due to uh, the situation concerning my parents. Uh, but now the good news, praise God, God gave me the best news I could ever have. And that is that I have been accepted into the family of God. And you maybe have felt the same way, but praise God that you was not accepted. But now I I've got good news for you. Praise God. I've got good news. The Lord, he wants to accept you into the family of God. I'm talking about the royal family. I'm talking about the blue blood family. Praise God. That's what God has done for me. And praise the name of the Lord. He is not a respecter of person. What God has done for me, hallelujah, he wants to, and he will, and he's able to do for you. Praise God. If you'll only put your trust in him, praise God. But we have accepted though into uh, the beloved is what Paul says in Ephesians 1 and 6. See, Christ is never, Christ is never really separated from his people. He is never really separated from his people. Wherever he goes, he's our head, the head. Wherever my head goes, then the rest of my body goes. Am I right about that? Yes, they can't separate them. Christ is the head. He's the head of the church. He's the head of the believers. Praise God. And wherever he goes, the body goes. Praise God. The Lord said, I will never leave you. Hallelujah. And I will never forsake you. Praise God. That's good news, isn't it? Praise God. Especially in these turbulent times that we live in right now. Praise God. It's good to know. It's good to know. Praise God. And, and, and find comfort in these words here. Huh? It should comfort every believer. Praise God. Just to know that we've been chosen and accepted in the uh, family of God by the creator himself. Praise God, the creator himself. We've been chosen to be a, uh, praise God, to be uh, uh, a part of that elite family of God. Oh boy, is that good news to you? Oh, praise God. I, uh, it's the best news that I've had all my life. Praise God, but we thank God for it. Amen. But now today we're going to move on a little bit and we want to examine uh, praise God, the, 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 the power, the life-giving power uh, that is the result of Christ's resurrection. The life-giving power that comes as a result of our faith in Christ and in his resurrection. Hmm? Praise God, according to Christ himself. Praise God, this power, it resides in him. The power is in Christ. If Christ is in you, then the power is in you. I'm talking about life-giving power. Praise God, we are alive. We are alive in Christ. And I thank God for that word. Praise God, I thank God. Go to John 10 now. Look at John 10. Uh, but the life is in him. Praise God, the life is in Christ. Christ is in us. And therefore, we have the life of Christ residing in us. Look at John 10 now. Praise God, John 10. And let's see, can we find, uh, scroll down 17. John 10, 17, write it down now, write these scriptures down. Therefore, Christ said, does my father love me? Because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. I lay it down that I may take it up again. Look what he says in verse 18. No man, no man taking it from me. No, they didn't kill him. Nobody killed him. They couldn't kill him. He says, no man taking it from me. I lay it down of myself. That's what Christ says. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my father is what he says. Uh, no man, praise God. Uh, no, no, it, it shouldn't be surprising to you that, uh, uh, but uh, it is to many people, but many people believe that he was actually killed. Uh, well, not really. Yes and no. Huh? He allowed them to kill him. Huh? Praise God. But he said, I lay it down myself. I got power to lay my life down and I have power to take it up again. And this is exactly what he did. Praise God. If you recall at the uh, grave of Lazarus, Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. That was what Christ said. Praise God. At Lazarus' grave talking to uh, Mary and Martha. In other words, all of the power 
that is in Christ. Hmm? It is available to those who believe and trust in him. You believe in him, then you have resurrection life in you. Praise God. Paul said in Colossians 1, I believe it is around 19, for it pleased the Father that in him, talking about Christ, should all the fullness of the Godhead dwell. Praise God. All the fullness. And of his fullness, we all have received grace for grace. Amen. It pleased the Father that in Christ all the fullness of life dwells in him. And that's why it's important that we know in our hearts that we have put our trust in Christ. Because when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then there's an exchange program going on there. He exchanged uh, uh, his life for our life because our, our life ain't worth nothing. So isn't that good for the dump uh, or the dung hill is all it's good for. But he gives us his life. Praise God. When we put our trust in him, it pleased the Father. That's what Christ said. Uh, Paul says in Colossians 1 there, it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness of the Godhead dwell. Hmm? Praise God. See, the, the, the resurrection power uh, that is in Christ, it, it flows in every part of his body. Yes, his body. Who are the, Who is the body? We are the body, Christ. I am the body of Christ. Therefore, his resurrection power flows through me, through the church, his church now. And I'm not talking about uh, necessarily uh, the visible church that you see all the time. Uh, that's just a facsimile of what the church ought to, is supposed to be like. But I'm talking about the true church. The true church consists of born again believers. That's the true church. And everybody, most everybody in your churches today, they are not born again believers. And that is a fact. Praise God. That's just a fact there. But now, uh, 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 to know this, to know this, that Christ's power flows within me uh, because of my trust and faith in him, his power flows through me. And to know this is to have and to know his power, praise God. And he also assures us that, praise God, he said, now, because I live, you, all, you, you shall also live because he lives. Praise God, we shall live also because he lives. Praise God, where do he live at? He lives inside of me. He lives inside of you. Praise God, if you're saved, if you uh, accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're truly repentant in your heart of your sin, then Christ, he's not abandoned, he should lie. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved is what he says. Praise God, but with the heart, man, believe it. Huh? With the heart. It's got to be a heart thing. It's not a head thing. It's not a memory thing. It's not a formality. It is a heartfelt belief in the Lord that causes him to release his power, his presence into our lives. Praise God. Amen. But now, again, the scripture tells us that through his resurrection now, through the Lord's resurrection, hmm? We, uh, and I mean, we, when I say we now, I, I'm talking about believers now. We believers, true believers, we have been quickened. The Bible said we've been quickened, quickened. That means made alive, made alive, which infers that we were, if we, if we were made alive, then previously to us being made alive, we were dead. Hmm? Dead men walking, dead men walking until Christ spoke light to us. He spoke life to my heart, praise God, and he breathed his life into me, just like he did Adam. Uh, and he, he breathed, he breathed into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. Huh? He was quickened. We could say Adam was quickened because when God made him, he made him out of the clay and he stood him up and praise God. But they were just uh, inanimate figures until he breathed his life into them. And the Bible says at that point, they became a living soul. Hallelujah, Jesus. They became a living soul. The Lord breathed upon me. Praise God. And I have become a living soul. He quickened me, is what the word says here. Uh, let's look at it then, Ephesians 2. Uh, lest you think that I've got that word somewhere, I, it came out the air somewhere. Uh, Ephesians 2, write that down. Now, we've been quickened, made alive, which infers that we were dead before he made us alive. Yes. If you're not saved right now, you're dead. You're dead. You are, well, you, you have a earthly life, but you have no spiritual 
life, which is the true life. Huh? Praise God. Nothing going to last but that which is spiritual, spiritual life. Amen. Ephesians 2, 1, uh, the apostle Paul says, and you hath he quickened. Told the believers that you, you brothers, God has quickened you, huh? who were dead in trespasses and sin. That's what we were. Every one of us, before I was saved, I was dead, 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 dead in trespasses and sin. Amen. But look, going down to verse five there, skip down to five there. Let's go down a little piece. He said, and even when we were dead in sins, hmm, hath he quickened us while we were dead in our sins. The Lord quickened us. He made us alive. Yeah? He quickened us together with Christ, Paul says. Huh? Then he said, by grace, you are saved. He quickened us together with Christ. Amen. See, only Christ can really speak life. Hmm? Only Christ through the Holy Spirit can speak life to a cold hearted, dead soul. Only Christ can do that. Amen. Praise God. My sheep know my voice. Oh boy. My sheep know I my voice. If you were ordained from the foundation of the world to be in the family of God, there will come a time when God will speak. And you being one of those ordained, predestined ones, you will hear his voice and you will live. Praise God. Hmm? Only Christ can do it. Only Christ can speak life to a cold hearted, dead soul. That's what we were. Huh? Praise God. When we believe in Christ, we receive a new life. We receive a, a spiritual life, actually, a spiritual life. Hmm? Before uh, the Lord's resurrection, uh, you know, uh, uh, before the resurrection takes place within me and you, praise God, we, we can really be compared to, to, to the winter time in a way. Like winter is trying to get away now, thank God for that. But we, before we was, uh, uh, the resurrection uh, was experienced in our lives, we experienced it in our lives, we were like the winter time, you know, kind of kind of cold and, and uh, you know, just kind of laid back there. But I thought, praise God, after uh, the wintertime goes, springtime come. Oh boy, it's getting warm a little bit now and people begin to dress differently. Flowers will begin to bloom, grass growing out there. Flowers, birds, uh, the birds are singing again already. Bees, those big old copper bees all over the place there trying to dig a hole in, in my two shed and all that kind of stuff. And then trees begin to produce their shade. The leaves, huh? Huh? Praise God. In other words, that new life, Huh? When the Lord saves us, when his resurrection life is imparted into us, oh, praise God, we begin to blossom just like it does during the old summertime, during the springtime. Amen. See, but now Christ's resurrection life is in every believer. If you're a true believer now, true believer, you have Christ's resurrection life in you. Hmm? New spring-like life. Praise God, it's springing up in us. Huh? Praise God, and this new life is called eternal life. It's called eternal life. Hmm? Oh, yes, I'll live forever. I'm not going to die. Well, you're not going to die either. Whether you're saved or unsaved, you're not going to die. It's just, you, 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 were not, you were made to live forever somewhere. Now, that's the question. Where are you going to spend eternity? I've settled that. Praise God. Oh, well, the Lord settled it for me. The Lord saved me. Praise God. And uh, cause now I did a lot of screaming and crying on the calling on the Lord. But now, you know, he, he helped me do that too. Praise God. Look at John 4, 14. <laughs> Write these scriptures down now. John 4, 14. Well, I say the life we have now, this resurrection life is also called eternal life. We have eternal life within us. Every true believer. Look at John 4. And let's find 14. Let's scroll to 14 there. Look at Christ says here. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him hmm, shall never thirst, never thirst, never thirst, never thirst. Hmm? But the water I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Oh, boy, an everlasting life. That's the life come forth as a result of our believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection life. Huh? We have everlasting life. Through his resurrection life, we have everlasting life. Look at Romans 6. Just going on, going 
Going on over a little bit to Romans 6 there. We have resurrection life. Praise God. Eternal life. Everlasting life. Romans 6. Look at uh, 8 there. Romans 6 and 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, hmm, dead with him, reckon ourselves to be dead with him. Praise God. His resurrection, my resurrection. His death, my death. See what baptism is all about. That's what you said when you're baptized. You said that you're dying with him. You're coming forth out of that grave with him. You're rising up. But look what Paul says now, Romans 6, Romans 6 and 8 there. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe also that we shall live with him. Mm. If we die with him, believe in his resurrection, believe he died for me, we're going to live with him. Look at verse 9. Knowing, Paul, he loves that word, knowing. Hmm? Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. No more. Hmm? Death has no more dominion over him. He don't die anymore. Death has no more dominion over him. So if death has no more, no more dominion over Christ and Christ lives in me, then death has no dominion over me. Hmm. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, now, you know, and we attend a lot of funerals, all of us. We go to funerals and and uh, we've heard um, uh, the funerals being uh, conducted and the minister used to offer words. Words have been cons con uh, of consolation, encouragement to the families usually. Uh, words that kind of relate to uh, that uh, resurrection of Christ and and how uh, how he's coming back again uh, to receive his children. But now uh, those who believe in him, those who believe in him, praise God, these are words of comforting to them when we speak of Christ's resurrection and our faith in Christ, meaning that we shall rise also. And uh, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah uh, gives us a, a word from the Lord here. The Lord speaking directly by his spirit now to the prophet Isaiah and Isaiah 26, Isaiah 26 and 19, 26 and 19. Uh, he says, thy dead men, look at it now, 19, write it down. Thy dead men, the Lord speaking now through him. Hmm? Thy dead men shall live. Yes. Together with my dead body shall they arise. That's what the Lord said through Isaiah some 600 years before Christ even come. Then he said, wake and sing. Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust. For the dew is as the dew of herbs. And the earth shall cast out the dead. The earth go cast us out. Huh? Wherever we at. Praise God. If you, if Christ lives in you, if he's deposited a seed in you, hmm? his seed in you, a good seed, a good word. If it's been placed deep down inside of you, he said the earth shall cast out the dead. Amen. No matter where our dead body may be. It don't matter. Could be deposited anywhere on this earth. Well, it could be in the sea, couldn't it? Hmm? Some of them die at sea. Some of them die in the waters. Praise God. Could be in the air. Praise God. Even in the bellies of the fish. Huh? Praise God. Could be wild animals have devoured the body. Could be in a urn on your on your um, fireplace somewhere right now. Huh? But he said the earth is going to cast out the dead. It don't matter where you're at. Praise God. If, if you're in Christ, you will rise to be with Christ. Hmm? If you're not in Christ, well, you're going to rise anyhow. But now you're going to rise for your judgment, though. Hmm? If you hadn't trusted the Lord as your Savior, you will rise for your judgment, though. Hmm? I, being a child of God, saved by the power of God, I will arise for my reward, not for my judgment. Why, Why is that, Pastor? Well, because Christ took my judgment. My judgment was laid upon him. My punishment, my penalty was laid upon him. Huh? And through my faith in him and my decision, praise God, to live for the Lord. Hmm. Proclaim him unashamedly, unabashedly. Praise God. Did I know that the earth is going to cast out my dead body and I'm going to be with the Lord? Amen. It don't matter where that, don't matter where I'm at. Amen. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, I believe it's somewhere in that neighborhood. He said that we should not sorrow as those who, what? Have no sorrow, hope. We should not sorrow. That's, uh, that's Thessalonians 4, 13, I believe it is. We should not sorrow as people in the world that have no hope. 
Why is that so? Hmm? Because we have hope. We got a blessed hope. Our hope and trust is in the Lord. So when death comes, we don't sorrow like others, as though it's, oh boy, it's, it's just a horrible thing. He's going into the black, uh, a black cloud and we don't know what's going on. We know what's going on. Amen. Praise God. We know that because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be what? Present. Present with the Lord. Mm. Present with the Lord. That's to save people now. Uh, a lot of you going to be absent from your body, and uh, but you won't go directly be present with the Lord. You and uh, you going to be you be in a layaway there, waiting until the final day of judgment and punishment. Uh, but now, as I close this morning, praise God. Let's go back to that main text that we started here, uh, Philippians three ten. Look back there one more time there, one more time, Philippians three ten, three and ten. Paul says here that I may know Him, that I may know Him, and the power of his resurrection hmm. and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable to his death, being made conformable to his death. Amen. Through our faith now, through our faith in Christ's death and his resurrection in this life here until Christ come back to get us we will experience, or are we going to die many deaths? Many deaths between the time that we live now and he come back again. As a matter of fact, Paul said, uh, we should die daily. He said, we should die daily. Hmm? Being made conformable to his death. He said, we should die daily. That's what Paul said. He said, the sin of the death is within us. Hmm? That we should not trust in ourselves. Hmm? Being made conformable conforming, conforming unto his death. It means that each day, each day we are dying to the worldly, worldly uh, aspirations, hmm? worldly endeavors, hmm? worldly comforts, worldly recreations. We're dying each day to these things, huh? things that we once dreamed of. We're dying to those things once we are saved now. Amen. We're, dry, we're, die, we're dying to our self-confidence. Hmm? Self-love. Oh, you hear people talking about, well, you got to love yourself. That, that's not scripture. Uh, and and uh, just touch him, touch him real gently and say, brother, I would not have you to be ignorant. No, no. We, we, we die to self. Self-love is idolatry. Huh? It's God's love. It's about God's love. Amen. Well, we die to self-confidence and worldly mindedness. Mm, mm, we die to all those things. Or as John says, we are dying to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Every day we're dying to these things which we have not yet completely, completely legally torn ourselves away from. Now, uh, uh, on paper, on paper, praise God, we are free. But now <laughs> in the flesh, we still have to deal with these things. But we already have won. Victory is ours. Amen? Like the Apostle Paul, all believers, uh, praise God, should have a desire to know, though, and to experience, praise God, and to feel the power of Christ's resurrection. We should, all of us. But now, sadly, in our churches today, hmm, we have a great variety, a great variety of those who call themselves Christians who are really not. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. They're not. They're not Christians. Huh? They may from time to time uh, uh, talk like uh, godly people. They yet not uh, know the power, though, of godliness. Not, not know the power of his resurrection. Not being conforming to him. Praise God. They may call themselves Christians. A lot of people do. But hmm, they are, their minds are, are open uh, to the point where they're tolerant of others. They, 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 they tell you, I'm not judgmental. I'm not judgmental. Uh, uh, I'm not a religious fanatic, like some uh, are, they say. And uh, But I'm glad that I am a religious fanatic. There's no doubt about that. I, I believe what the Word of God says. Amen. It, not what mama say, not what daddy say, not what sister say, not what brother say. Show me in the Word of God, and I would accept it. But if it's not in God's Word, I won't accept it. It's just something that, huh? Simply being that uh, uh, they, these people have a form of godliness, yes. 
church full of people with forms, huh? not conformable to Christ and his holiness, his righteousness, but they got a form of godliness, worldly, but they deny the power, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Huh? That power comes with it when you truly, truly are saved. But now my prayer today for you, huh? for you, you that are of, of a mind that just going to church is going to save you. If that's your mind, hmm, it's my prayer that you might experience, praise God, the power, the power of his resurrection and therefore be conformed unto Christ. Hmm? Conformed. Praise God. That's what Paul talks about being conformable to Christ, to his very death. That's my prayer today. Amen. Praise God. That power that will always accompany sincere, heartfelt people that are submitted to Christ. That's the power that I pray that you'll experience today. Hmm? See, we're saved. We're saved by the word of God. Amen. The Bible says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Huh? But also in, in power, praise God, <laughs> the word of God, the word of God, but also in power. Amen. Praise God. See, Paul says here, he makes it plain that our gospel, that's First Thessalonians, I believe it is. Uh, he says, uh, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but in power, resurrection power. Praise God. In power hmm? and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. Hmm. As you know, what manner of men we were, we were, but we've been changed though. See, there's got to be an after. It's got to be before and an after in your life. You ought to be able to look back and see how you was before. And now is a great change in your life. Before and and after. Hmm? That is, if you tasted this power, this resurrection power, and you have conformed to his death. Praise God. Dying to that old life. All your old dreams, aspirations, and goals you've set for yourself. Bye-bye. Hmm? We have a new repurpose, and that's to glorify the Lord. Praise God. Our lives have been changed. Every nook and cranny of our lives have been changed. Praise God. My question to you is, has this really happened in your life today? On this Sunday morning, has it happened to you? Can you really look the Lord in the face and say, Lord, I've been changed because my life reflects that change. I am not the person that I used to be. Can you really say that today? Huh? Well, praise God. All you have to do, if you're not sure, is to repent of your sins. Christ came and died for our sins. Now, if you repent of your sins, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Bible says, praise the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. I believe God that it shall be even as he has said. Let us pray. Father, I bless you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity this morning. You've given me to, praise God, to awake with a reasonable portion of my mind or the mind of Christ. And, and Lord, allow me to share your word, that which is embedded within my heart, within my soul. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray, Father, that you'll touch the heart of that person, whosoever it is that you bring to hear this word today. Lord, animate, activate, invigorate your word that it might come alive in the hearts of those who hear your word today. And Lord, I'd be so mindful to give you all the praise. I'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you receive this word today, praise God, that's from the Lord, I would ask that you pray with me. Pray with me. Praise God that God will continue to speak through me, that he might be glorified. I have no aspirations to be anybody but just a servant, a bond servant like the Apostle Paul of God, giving him all the glory, all the glory, praise God, that I can possibly give him. You pray with me that God will continuously speak through me until my time is up down here, and I will graciously bow out of here. But you pray with me, share this word. Praise God, if you were able to share this word. Will you do that today? You say you love the Lord, don't you? Huh? Well, if you love the Lord, you share this word. If you believe this is God's word that I showed you, praise God, you share this word. Hmm? If you don't share it, then maybe you just don't believe it, right? 
Amen. Hit the like button if that'll help us get more circulation and reach more people. Subscribe. And when we come again, praise God, when we come again, God's will, and that will be today. Praise God. We're going to do a communion service today, and we're going to preach a message again today. And so it'll be Lord's will. It'll be up again this afternoon. Another message this afternoon. So praise God until that time. Praise God. And may God bless you. We'll see you again uh, on this afternoon, and hopefully, praise God, on Wednesday of next week. God's will. Until that time, may God bless you and keep you is my prayer today. Amen.